Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Ballack, Vice President for Botanical Science, Director and Philicology Curator at the Institute of Economic Botany of the New York Botanical Garden. And it's been my privilege and pleasure to be curator of our brand new exhibition, Wild Medicine, Healing Plants from Around the World, featuring the Italian Renaissance Garden. To coincide with the opening of Wild Medicine, it was my great honor to present the first Henry Hurd Rusby Award for Excellence in Ethnobotany and Ethnomedicine to the very deserving Dr. Andrew Weil. Before I tell you about Dr. Weil's accomplishments, let me tell you a little bit about the award's namesake, Dr. Henry Hurd Rusby, a true pioneer in the field of ethnobotany as well as a very influential figure in the establishment of the New York Botanical Garden. Although trained as a physician, Dr. Rusby was first a botanist and plant explorer. Shortly after graduating medical school in 1884, he left for a two-year South American expedition to study medicinal and useful plants, one of six major expeditions he was to make during his career. He collected 4,000 species of plants, and some 800 were new to science. His last expedition was in 1921. Rusby was in his late 60s at the time. He founded the Economic Botany Museum at the New York Botanical Garden. It consisted of 210 display cases of economically important plants from around the world, and today, the collection is well curated in a special area of the William and Linda Steer Herbarium here at the New York Botanical Garden, and today, over a hundred years after its founding, is still used for research and teaching. Rusby was a true pioneer and a lover of botany. It is in this spirit that we presented the award to Dr. Andrew Weil. Dr. Weil graduated Harvard University in 1964 with a concentration in ethnobotany. He graduated Harvard Medical School in 1968. His mentor there was the renowned scientist and teacher, Dr. Richard Evans Schultes, whose career as an Amazonian botanist spanned almost 60 years. Now, there was a quite robust section in medicinal plants in Schultes' Botany 104 course. And we had several lecturers who came in who were pharmacists, some from the Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and from the Illinois College of Pharmacy. In those days, <coughs> uh, there was a subject taught in schools of pharmacy called pharmacognosy, which is about the recognition and discovery of new drugs from plant sources. Um, that really was the last link between botany and the health sciences. You know, several hundred years ago, if you wanted to be a physician, you had to know botany because most of medicine consisted of giving people preparations of plants. But in modern times, uh, the use of plants in medicine had fallen to the great disfavor, in, and instead, doctors were taught to use purified chemical compounds that were believed to be much better, much more scientifically useful, um, free of all of the confusion of wild medicine. Uh, pharmacognosy was the last link left between medicine and the health sciences. And shortly after I graduated from Harvard, pharmacognosy was dropped as a required subject in all American schools of pharmacy. And that was really the severing of the last remaining link between botany and the health sciences. I think a great tragedy. Um, the, my introduction to the world of medicinal plants through this course under Richard Evan Schultes gave me a very different perspective on entering medical school from most of my students. There are not many, there were not many physician botanists in the past. There are not many physician botanists currently. And I think I was the only one of Schulte's uh, students who went on to medical school. And so I had a, a, a special relationship with him and with the Harvard Botanical Museum for a long time afterwards. But first of all, that perspective made me realize how incomplete the information that I learned in my study of pharmacology was. Most of the people who lectured to me in pharmacology had no idea of the plant sources of the drugs that they were teaching about. Or if they mentioned them, they had never seen these plants 
Uh, they had never used the plants themselves, and they had no awareness of the differences between the plants and drugs isolated from the plants. Uh, Schulte sent me down to South America in, uh, after my first year of medical school, and I spent uh, a summer in the Andes and in the Amazon collecting medicinal plants. I then, you know, after medical school, spent quite a lot of time in South America, and one time Schultes came down and uh, we collected together. I'll tell you a story about that in a moment. At any rate, because of my awareness of plants, I began to compare the effects of whole plants with those of isolated derivatives of plants. And I began to see very interesting and very consistent differences. And this has had a profound effect on my own medical practice and on the integrative medicine that I developed and taught. Dr. Wiles introduced the concept of integrative medicine to the world at a time when it was sorely needed. Today, there are thousands of practitioners who specialize in this area of medicine. He is a tireless medical educator as director of the University of Arizona Center for Integrative Medicine. In addition to his professional training of integrative medical practitioners, he has devoted a great deal of his efforts to public education, including the use of botanical remedies in medicine. It is with great pride that we honor Dr. Andrew Weil with the Henry Hurd Rosby Award for Excellence in Ethnobotany and Ethnomedicine. It was the perfect way to kick off the opening of wild medicine, healing plants from around the world, featuring the Italian Renaissance garden, an exhibition that carries on the wonderful traditions that Rosby started more than a century ago. For more information on this exhibition, visit nybg.org.